Next one. Bonjour la classe. Today we're going to learn how to use a bilingual dictionary. This is a very useful skill. It seems like it would be pretty easy, but not always. And it can help you from making some major mistakes with what you're trying to say in French. So very useful skill. Um, for a bilingual dictionary, you'll have two different sides. You'll have one side where you look up the English word and you find the French, or the other side where you look up the French word and find the English. We're going to start off with English to French side. Okay, you'll see that this is the English to French side of the dictionary because when you look in the corners, you can see the words milk and mirth. Those are both English words. So this is the English to French side of the dictionary. Dictionaries give us a lot of really helpful information. So if you're looking up a word like milkwort, whatever that is, but you're looking up milkwort, um, it will tell you a couple different things about this word milkwort in French. First, it'll tell you that milkwort is a noun. This N dot in italics is an abbreviation for the part of speech. So our part of speech here is a noun. It's a person, place, or a thing. Then it will give you the definition, euphorbe. Euphorbe is how you say milkwort in French, and you know that it's a noun. Then for every noun that we have, we will actually also be given a gender because every single noun in French has a gender, whether you're actually talking about a person or an animal, or if you're talking about a table, they will all have gender. And it's important to look this up in the dictionary if you don't already know it. So if you're talking about milkwort, and you don't know whether it's masculine or feminine, you look it up in the dictionary, and there you go. It tells you that euphorbe is a feminine noun in French. You can also have masculine nouns. You'll see this word mill, like what you put grain into to make flour, um, is a noun. It's moulin in French, and it's masculine. So you can have a feminine or a masculine noun. Those are the only two genders. Now, when you're looking up a word, like say we're still talking about mill, sometimes you'll have words that have the word mill inside of them in English. And you can look up mill to find those words and the dictionary will abbreviate it. So if we're looking up the word watermill, you look up mill or you could look up watermill, but here we're talking about a mill and a watermill they try to save a little space by doing this weird squiggle. This weird squiggle is taking place of what the original word was that you looked up. So we have water mill, which is moulin. Next, we're looking at verbs. So we have nouns and verbs. Those are the parts of speech we have so far. Uh, this word is mince. That means to cut something up very, very finely. It is a verb, and you can see that because the abbreviation is V, and in this case, we have what's called a transitive verb. So it'll tell you VT. It's not really important that you know the difference between transitive and intransitive until we get into late parts of French too. Just know that if you see VT or if you see VI, it's telling you that these words are verbs. In French, we have different types of verbs. So we have ER verbs, meaning they end in ER, IR verbs, they end in IR, and then RE verbs, which I don't have an example of here, but you'll see a lot of them later. Our next part of speech is an adjective. So we have nouns, verbs, and now adjectives. Adjectives are words that are describing a noun. So it's describing um, the cat as being blue or the boy as being stupid. Those are all adjectives. And the abbreviation is ADJ. Our next part of speech is an adverb. And an adverb is describing how an action is being done. So if you are crying softly or if you are running slowly, the softly and slowly are adverbs because they're describing how you did the action, the verb. Right here, minutely, if I diced things minutely, very, very, very smallly, um, that is an adverb. In English, our adverbs end in L-Y, and then in French, they end in M-E-N-T, so it's easy to identify an adverb. Now, there are some times in English where a word can be both a noun and they can be also used as a verb. 
Um, an example here would be mirror. If you have an actual mirror that's on your wall, that's a noun, and you say miroir in French, it's masculine. But if you're talking about um, when an image mirrors another, it looks exactly the same but flipped, it mirrors it, then that is a verb, and you're going to want to have réfléchir. Okay? So when you're looking in a mirror, the mirror is mirroring your face. Okay, so miroir is what you're looking into, and réfléchir is what is what ha is happening in the mirror. So it's a verb. Another abbreviation that you'll see is actually the abbreviation for the word abbreviation it is abrev right here, and you'll see that in italics. This is because the word misc is actually an abbreviation in English. So misc is abbreviating the word miscellaneous. And sometimes when you look up a word in the dictionary, it won't give you the definition right there. This is not how you say miscellaneous in French. It will actually tell you to go and see another word, see miscellaneous. Sometimes it'll say see reflect or see around, whatever it is. You're gonna go and look up that word in order to find the French definition for this word or vice versa if you're looking up the French word and you want the English. So next we're gonna go from um, French to English. So if you have a word that you have in French and you wanna get the English definition, you flip to the other side of the dictionary. You know that the dictionary, you know, the side that you're on is French to English by looking up in that corner and seeing French words. Avani and Avano are not words that are in English, so you're on the French side, the French to English side. Um, another abbreviation that we can see, and you'll see this on the French to English or the English to French, whatever, is this word or this abbreviation prep. That is not the definition of your word, okay? It's telling you that this is a preposition. The word avant means before or forward, and that's a preposition because it's telling where something is in relationship to another. That's what prepositions will often do. Then you'll see what's really, really helpful from the French to English side is you can actually look up a French word like avant dernier, and you can see it's part of speech and then it's gender. Right here we have avant dernier, it's masculine, and then if you change the I-E-R to I-E accent grave, R-E, it is feminine. You can also see avant-hier is an adverb, and avant-première is a feminine noun. It's really important to look up the gender of your noun because that plays a role in um, the way we use other words in a sentence. And that's it. Make sure that you have all of those abbreviations in your notes, that they are Cornell style, and that you highlight the important information. Bonne chance. Au revoir.